This video will explain the paper, Deep Double Descent, where bigger models and more data hurt. This is a new study showing the existence of double descent in deeper models like CNNs, ResNets, and Transformers. This picture explains the idea of double descent well. It describes this valley right here, where you have sort of this blend between the classical bias variance trade-off and classical statistical machine learning theory, and then you have sort of the expectation of the modern machine learning, sort of the conventional wisdom of bigger models are always better, assuming that the test error will just continue to decrease as you scale up the size of the model. The double descent phenomenon describes this case where you reach this point where the test error starts to increase rather than decrease with respect to decreasing the training error, but then after this peak, it starts to, the test error starts to decrease again. In this paper, we'll look at their study on the way that model size impacts double descent, the way that the size of the data set adding new samples impacts double descent, as well as training epochs, and then really interestingly is the way that label noise will exaggerate double descent across the different model sizes. This is definitely an interesting phenomenon to be aware of with training your deep learning models, and this paper will show the existence of it with these deeper models like CNNs, ResNets, and Transformers. The existence of double descent challenges some conventional wisdoms with training deep learning models. Things like larger models are always better, adding more data is always going to result in a better model, and then early stopping, this idea of stopping the model training such that it doesn't decrease the training error so much that it overfits and results in terrible test error. But actually in studies in this paper, they're going to show that you can train the model such that it will correct the overfitting phenomenon that we think we observe in training these deep learning models. This is sort of the idea of this bias variance trade-off. We have this point in the model where we think that it's overfitted and therefore training it further is just going to result in higher uh, training accuracy but worse testing accuracy. In this paper, Deep Double Descent, they explore the phenomenon of double descent across these four levels of variation. The first of which is model-wise double descent, varying the number of model parameters. So the way that they do this and increase the model size or the model capacity is by varying the width of the network. So this means increasing the number of filters in the convolutional layers compared to something like increasing the depth, which would mean comparing a ResNet 18 to say a ResNet 34 or 50, or something like the efficient net, how they have that compound scaling that's relating the input resolution with the width and the depth. What they're doing in this case is they're just going to be increasing the width, and that's sort of this scale of increasing model size where you observe the double descent phenomenon. Then they'll look at epoch-wise double descent. So usually if you're training your model and you see this kind of increase in test error, you might note to do some early stopping here and stop the training and not have it do this uh, you know, spike increase in testing error. But actually what they show is they have the second descent as they kind of train their way out of what appears to be overfitting, which is somewhat remarkable in this case if you have this sort of uh, bias variance way of uh, looking at this kind of uh, training curve. Then we'll look at sample-wise non-monotonicity. This kind of this idea like a non-monotonic thing is like it's not always increasing or decreasing. This idea that as you add more training samples, it's not just going to continually reduce the testing error, which is sort of counterintuitive because you would assume that as you have a larger training set, the train test distribution is you know closer. So you would assume that always adding training samples is going to be good, but they've shown cases that this actually shifts the peak to the right and results in a higher testing error with a similar model capacity. Then we'll look at the label noise. So what they're doing is they are sort of exaggerating the double descent by corrupting the label. So with a random probability, they're going to flip the label on certain images or certain uh, samples in the uh, transformers task. And they're going to do this to sort of see how these models, uh, you know, model noise and how this impacts their ability to, uh, you know, generalize the test error and sort of the double descent phenomenon. Throughout the paper, the authors describe this kind of peak in the test error as the interpolation threshold, where the double descent starts and the testing error starts to decrease again. So throughout this paper, they'll frame this as the effective model complexity, which is a complexity metric that's looking at how many samples and the model with its current capacity can sort of model. So in this case, you see that they have the underparameterized resume, this kind of critically parameterized intermediate spot, and the overparameterized resume. And they sort of define this in order to like describe the phenomenon throughout the paper. Another interesting detail to note about this paper is the way that the label noise kind of sort of accentuates this double descent phenomenon. So in the experiments, they're going to have the experiment with 10% and 20% label noise. So what this means is that the, a given data point would have a probability P of having a correct label, and then 1 minus P of having a random label sampled from the uniform distribution of labels, resulting in things like this car image from CIFAR 10 being labeled as dog. So this case results in a much larger double descent phenomenon, much easier to see it, and they sort of also reason about how label noise is evident in real world data, which I think is really interesting as well, sort of this discussion around, uh, you know, the label noise and sort of how that impacts the way that you interpret this, the experiments in this paper. These plots show the result of increasing the width parameter on the ResNet 18 with respect to different amounts of label noise. 
So you see in this case with the 20% label noise how it's much easier to observe the double descent phenomenon than the cases of the 0% or 10% label noise. So you see the double descent phenomenon where the test error increases and then continu continues to decrease. And then in this plot you can see a more fine-grained uh, plot with the different label noises. So increasing it by 5% at each interval and showing how the more label noise, the more this double descent phenomenon is evident. Another interesting result they show is the impact of data augmentation on the model-wise double descent. So doing data augmentations like rotations or translations results in this kind of a plot compared to the double descent plot that we just saw on the previous slide. So you see in the case of width of data augmentation, the width parameter needs to be much larger to start to descend again to this original point. So in this plot, you actually might want to do double uh, optimal stopping at this region, sort of compared to you know, scaling your width up even further beyond the plot that's shown in this study. This plot shows results from exploring the epoch-wise double descent. So sort of exploring this phenomenon where it appears that the model is overfitted, but then you continue to train it and then it sort of escapes this plateau of the increased test error and then starts to decrease the test error again. So sort of interestingly in this plot is that you see in the case of the large model where the width parameter of the ResNet is 64 compared to 12 and 3, it demonstrates a double descent phenomenon where it looks like in the intermediate model that this isn't going to come back down. It sort of looks like it's plateaued or saturated at this point. Similarly to the plots shown with respect to increasing the model size and seeing the double descent phenomenon, in the epoch-wise case we also see that the plots are more exaggerated with respect to increasing the label noise. So the purple chart shows the 0% label noise with the ResNet 18 in respect to training for more epochs compared to the 20% label noise where we really see this double descent phenomenon similarly in the CIFAR 100 dataset and then a different model architecture of the 5-layer convolutional network. This plot describes our experiments with sample non-monotonicity or this idea that adding more training data actually hurts the performance and increases the test error. So in this case you see the green chart shows having 18,000 training samples and the blue chart shows having 4,000 with respect to increasing the embedding dimension on the transformer architecture. So you see that there's sort of this intermediate zone where having the 4,000 training samples has a lower test error than having the 18,000 samples. So it's interesting to see this relationship between the model size and the number of data points, which is similar to the, how they uh, compared the sample monotonicity plots on this chart as well. So they're showing on the convolutional network with the CIFAR 10 examples with the different levels of label noise, how you're sort of varying this width parameter and then seeing the double descent phenomenon with respect to the different number of samples in the data set. So the 12,500, the 2,500, then the full CIFAR 10 50,000 data points. And they also further show the uh, transformer models in this plot. The lottery ticket hypothesis has a good explanation for why the test error may continue to decrease after it starts a second descent. The lottery ticket conjecture, part of it, is stochastic gradient descent seeks out and trains a well-initialized subnetwork. So similar to the previous paper from Belkin et al. in 2018, that sort of explains this phenomenon with the Occam's razor, saying sort of the simplest explanation is the best explanation, might be sort of the explanation for why the second descent continues to decrease the test error, but the sort of phenomenon of double descent remains an open question by the authors of this paper, Deep Double Descent. Reacting to this paper, Deep Double Descent, I'm really interested in how this looks with unsupervised learning with massive models and massive data sets if we have this kind of double descent phenomenon on these unsupervised learning or self-supervised learning tasks. I'm also interested in the idea of curriculum learning and this phenomenon of sample non-monotonicity. So if you increase the data set size, it seems that there is this intermediate point where you're actually increasing the test error. But I also think it's interesting to think about what training points you're adding to the training set rather than just sort of treating all samples as the same with respect to increasing the size of the data set and observing this double descent phenomenon. I also think it's interesting to think about double descent in the context of neural architecture search. So you're searching for these optimized uh, architectures, but it might be interesting to think if they're sort of uh, like borderlining on this valley of double descent that is sort of, uh, you know, making it so you can't really see the true results of the engineered architectures. But I also think it's really interesting the impact that label noise has throughout this entire paper. So you always see that this phenomenon of double descent is heavily exaggerated in the case of adding label noise. In the paper they reason about how label noise is evident in real world data sets. And so generally I think it's interesting how this phenomenon relates to sort of the importance of label engineering and you know taking care of the label noise in data sets to avoid this kind of a confusion in interpreting sort of the plots and you know avoiding things like overfitting and these kinds of ideas. Thanks for watching this explanation of deep double descent, this remarkable intermediate zone where the test error increases and then continues to decrease along variations of increasing the model size, adding more data points, and training for more epochs. This phenomenon is especially exaggerated with respect to adding noise to the labels in the data set. I think this is a really interesting phenomenon that is definitely useful to be aware of and you know it might help you inform decisions when you're looking at these kind of training plots of the accuracy or the error in order to inform decisions like hyperparameter optimization or neural architecture search or things like data augmentation. 
Thanks for watching and please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning and AI videos.